welcome to a bonus quarterfinals episode of AGT Time. Cody Patterson here along with... Along with Jay Bach and another special guest this week. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Mr. AGT Commenter. <laughs> the AGT, AGT Commenter. AGT Commenter. He's back. He's back. <laughs> this is the fourth, my fourth appearance. Yeah, yeah, in one season. That's fantastic. In one season. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm starting to rack up the appearances. <laughs> well, I, I hope it's not your fourth and final. We hope to have you oh, back I, many, many more times. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so what we, what we kind of got planned for tonight is uh, we're going to let AGT commenter kind of uh, talk about we're going to do a, a full review of uh, quarterfinals. Well, not a full review. We're going to do a kind of a highlights review of quarterfinals. Uh, we're going to kind of let him talk about some of the acts that he enjoyed seeing in quarterfinals. Uh, let him talk about some some cheerleaders and some of the stuff that they did, as well as uh, defend his girl. Uh, uh, Den Den uh, go ahead and say her name <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's Danella. It is, her name is Danelia. Danelia. Oh, yeah, her. her. Yes, I, Danelia. I, I could... I completely forgot. Yeah, her. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's not that's un, that's uncalled for. Sick burn, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's fourteen. Okay. <laughs> um. So, uh, we we we're gonna kind of go through that a little bit. You know, a uh, quick review of quarterfinals. Let him talk about that. We're gonna talk do a semifinals review, or sorry, a semifinals preview. Uh, we know of our um. Uh, wild cards they're going to be in semifinals so we're going to talk about them um, but real quick how you doing you doing doing okay yeah everything's going good everything's going I'm good healthy over here yeah you too jay yeah, yep. you're doing good too <laughs> <laughs> thanks yep <laughs> uh i'm i'm gonna go ahead and, and reveal a little bit here like <laughs> this is uh labor day weekend and people are displaced from their no normal spots and uh, you know we're we're doing our very best to put together this uh, this content, but if you hear you know some technological glitches, some of that stuff, you know, be patient with us. We're going to do our very best with it. But uh, you know, just um, you know, we, we appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys and and to be heard, and uh, we appreciate your patience with uh, us as we um, figure some things out sometimes. So that's that's all I wanted to say about that. Thanks. Thanks for, thanks for putting that out there, Jay. Yeah. Uh, you know, AGT commenters kind of, everyone's kind of enjoying a vacation right now. You know, family members are visiting whatnot. So, um, uh, we kind of put this together, but we appreciate him coming on to kind of talk about this. So, uh, real quick, AGT commenter, what do you think of quarterfinals? Well, so the, the part that was most disappointing was how many weren't actually on the stage in the actual, studio with the judges because with the amount that they had in universal studio just around the campus especially when it was a handful of singers i was really surprised that they didn't bother just having them in the studio on the actual stage um the general consensus i think online kind of is that this is a down season which i'm pretty comfortable giving a pass to this season on just about anything with <laughs> considering the the circumstances but the thing that stuck out to me, I think the most outside of, I think some underwhelming performances by some people was the judging without Simon was, I think we take, I think we took Simon for granted there for a little while because it was a little rough there for a stretch and, and how he tried to, to play the pessimism role, but then he almost goes a little bit too far. <laughs> it's not natural on him. He's, he's much more of a, a, a humorous person. So Without Simon, I thought it just, they struggled. There was multiple acts. I really would have liked to have heard Simon's thoughts, especially the singers. So that part of it, I think, I, I wasn't anticipating that as much. I just assumed we would get by and you wouldn't, I don't think I thought we'd notice the judges or one being gone quite that much. Um, but there was, I felt like probably four or five acts after that, that I felt like have a chance that they could win the show. Um, of the 22 left, you can basically get rid of anybody who is in a Duncan save or a judges vote from, or a wild card. So that's, that's already 10 acts that you can basically cut from who have a chance to win the show. Cause they've never won it. And I don't think they ever will. 
Um, so I think we've trimmed it down and, and I think there's a clear front runner front runner as you both know, but there's certainly are some acts that I think could, could draw some votes depending and, and, and make a move uh, in the semis and the finals. Yeah. So going into quarterfinals, kind of give us your, your top 10 at this point. Going into the semis, you mean? I was, I was say going into the semifinals, coming out of quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, so I have Danelia one, I have Waffle Crew two, I have the Spiros Bros three, Christina Ray four, uh, Kennedy Dodds five, Roberta six, Malik seven, Selena eight, Brett Loudermilk nine, and Brandon Leak ten. So I actually think that's a really not not a bad fine if that was the finals, which the projection obviously with being ten of them. I, I think that would be a, a solid final, but I think after that, there's actually a pretty significant drop off to be, if I'm being totally honest. Yeah, you seem to have a pretty good mix there between the singers and the what I'm gonna consider variety acts: your Spiros Bros and your Brett Louder Milk. Yeah, it's uh, half and half. It's half it's half singers and then half variety: a dance, a spy, uh, Diablo, Diabolo, uh, <laughs> drummer, and the uh, variety act Brett Louder Milk, and then the spoken word. So it's five and five, which is usually, if you actually look back, it's not totally uncommon that that's kind of how it works out. You get kind of half and half. And do you think singers have a good chance so far this season? I and mean, we haven't well, had a, a singer winner in a, in a while. Last year. Last year. Totally uh, other, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, straight singer. I mean, he was he was a piano player. Oh, sure. Um, he yeah. Had, he, had, really he had the it's... story. He had the story. Right. Mean, there were some other other factors there, but I'm talking yeah, straight I mean, up it, singer. And Michael Grimm would be the last one. Or, uh, excuse me, you, uh, Landau Eugene uh, Murphy. Yeah. He was yeah, the last. And that's, and that's been a straight while. Straight covered, yeah, kind of cover yeah. karaoke style singer. Yep. Yeah, I think, well, so Kennedy's really the only original singer left who's writing her own songs. If I'm looking at this now that no one yells out. So it's basically down now to karaoke singers and variety acts. Um, so with, I, I, I've said all season that the best group is the singers. This is a pretty solid singing season and a little bit of a disappointing um, uh, variety season, especially from a magician standpoint has been, the, I think probably the biggest letdown, um, which is disappointing because usually you expect a really good crop of magicians on this show. Um, but I think, I think if you were, betting on singers or the field i don't think i think i'd probably put my money on a singer winning yeah that's a that's a pretty pretty strong bet uh you know yeah. as as you all know i'm not big on the singers jay you're not i mean i'm not necessarily no i show up for the variety that's my yeah. that's my bag yeah i mean we we've commented a couple of times that there that some of the singers have been fairly enjoyable but it's not our not our cup right. of tea we prefer more of the variety type things uh yeah. you know even dancers we're not big on uh but i mean you, you can't doubt that uh, that the singers are a little bit stronger this year than we've seen in the past yeah and like my second and third on my top 10 are both variety acts. So right. mm -hmm. I still think there's, I, I, I love a good variety act. Um, my, maybe one of my favorites, if not favorite all the time is Shin Lim. Um, and he's, you know, he's a, he's a magician and, and so, and Darcy Land, who's a ventriloquist and stuff. So there, there's plenty of like variety is, is certainly something that is a draw for, for me as well. It's just, um, I'm a big fan of singing and music anyway. So I, I kind of, I, I still enjoy that part of it. And, and this year, I think there's some really good singers. Where did you have Archie Williams ranked? Did you have him in your top 10? No, I have him down towards my bottom, actually. Really? I, yeah, I get I get the draw for him. And he reminds me of Robert Finley last year, if you even remember him. He was blind. Yes. Um, yes. Yep. He's got a very similar style of singing and voice. They kind of, that jazzy kind of raspy at times it's not it's not necessarily going to blow you away with the technical you know smoothness of their voice even it's kind of it's kind of that soulful music that just that makes you feel good um i don't think he's uh overly impressive singer in my opinion i know he's probably going to get votes because his story is pretty is it's probably one of the more incredible stories we've seen on the show um just in terms of everything he's gone through in his life so there's going to be votes for that and i get that but um yeah, I, 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 
it might just be the style of music and and that that's not that doesn't do it for me but yeah i have them a little bit closer to the bottom all right of the well if if it's all right with you guys i'd kind of like to talk about like each of the upcoming episodes about who we know is going to be on this week who we know is going to be on the next week and then uh just kind of like who we think our final 10 will be based on on that um and hopefully that'll give me an opportunity to score some points uh (laughs) off our draft board or you know something i'm I'm looking for some good news is what i (laughs) is what i want here what it sounds like to me is you're trying to do another draft here (laughs) 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 that you want to you want to uh get get a little redraft going and and get uh just the semi finals and on uh on uh, draft to get some more points no i stand by my my draft board <laughs> uh, I, I i want to hear you know an outsider's opinion you know somebody sure. else's uh thoughts on on what i'm looking at here so yeah um yeah. okay the so uh does somebody have in front of them the list of acts that's going to be on the next episode the I do, yeah. One. Okay, so go ahead and um, uh, give us that that rundown. Who are the next? Who who are the? Uh, it's eleven acts that we're going to see, right? Yes. And save those last uh, those wild cards for last. We'll chat about those. Okay, so it's Alan Silva, Archie, Brandon Leak, Broken Roots, Double Dragon, Malik Dope, Roberta, Shakira and the Spyros bros. And then there's two, the both wild cards are in this one, which is, you want me to say them? Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about that now. Yeah. And then the, so the other two, the two wild cards, it's uh dance town family and Thomas day. Okay. So that's the 11, uh, 10 and 11 dance town family and Thomas day. Can I yeah. say that? I think these are two really weak choices. I agree. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, when I was looking at the list, I, after the last quarterfinal, I always look at who's, who's not in and try and kind of make a bet on who, who they're going to pick for the wild cards. I, I didn't even have these two. They're so far down my scroll to actually see their names that um, I didn't even get that far. So I was really surprised. Not to mention that Thomas Day like literally withdrew from the competition. <laughs> If, if he I'm, literally did he, he he said i can't i i <laughs> yeah, yeah like he said, so yeah, he, said, he basically said he had to go play football uh he's yeah, like, which, yeah I, I i can't continue i gotta go play football so 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 my assumption is this which is like he knew he was, he was going to run into the football season if he kept going my assumption is is he doesn't want to leave and then if he like when he comes back, I assume they won't let him be around the team for a while or whatever because of the, the pandemic. That's my assumption as to why initially he didn't want to come is because he didn't want to, you know, whether he had to sit out 14 days or whatever when he comes back, but he was only going to be gone for a couple of days anyways. Um, but, uh, but yeah, well, that would and, be my and, assumption as to why he withdrew initially. And, and we've seen from the rest of a lot of these acts, they've done it from wherever they are. I mean, Dance Town right. family did it from Miami, so he could, yeah, he could do it from Nashville. He could do it from his home. He could do it on the football field for all right. we care. Uh, it, it it doesn't really matter because all these others have done it remotely too. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it was odd, and it's even more odd that he's going to be in the semifinals for no, no apparent reason. <laughs> so, so why did they not bring in a Sheldon Riley? someone of that nature that's a great question that's who i thought was the most obvious clearing pick but did, did yeah they, if you're gonna bring they... a singer bring one i mean if you're gonna bring a singer bring one that's people think is really good you know yeah. you know we've seen yeah. twice i mean do they did they do that on purpose did they bring two acts in that they knew wouldn't make it to the finals they didn't want a wild card making yeah. it in That sounds possibly. like a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I, 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 well, I mean, <laughs> how much Reddit have you been reading lately? Uh, quite a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I mean, it's it's if they bring in two weak acts, they don't bring in the the you know they don't bring in stronger acts that everyone else thought that they should bring in to give them a second chance. Right. And uh, you know what? Uh, I I will say this. I 
want to go on the record and say that, you know, I am still very confident about my drafts. I think that I chose a really great team. Uh, Cody, you had Thomas Day on your draft board. Yes. If he makes it through into the finals, you can earn a point for Thomas Day making point. it into the finals. Yeah. So he's, if, he's broken roots, if Broken Roots and Thomas Day get to the finals, I get two points. <laughs> they, sure, yes. Okay, yep. fair enough. Okay, I'll take it. I'm giving you every advantage because you need it. <laughs> do you want to, to do you want to know who the other eleven then for the second one are? Well, uh, real quick, I, I'm curious. Uh, let's each sort of say our top five, and then let's talk about the next week. Okay. So, so the top five from this group. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You go ahead, Jay. Uh, I still feel really good about Archie. Uh, Archie Williams. I think that. Alan Silva is a really strong choice. Um, Spyros bros are so infectious, but man, I, I'm not sure that they're top five. Let me look at my list here. Uh, let's go Archie, Alan Silva, Shakira McGrath, Brandon Leak. That's four. And Spyro's Bros. Yeah. All right. Yep. Those are my five. I I actually think, I mean, I don't want to be a copycat, but I actually think that as well. Uh, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but Malik and Double Dragons, they're going to get left out from this. Um, you know, that might even be, are they doing a Duncan save this week? Do we know? Yeah, they do. I They usually, they have in the past. Yeah. So, so I would say Malik. That's, and Double... that's how Nemo are made the finals. Okay, I would say Malik and Double Dragon Twins, and maybe Spy and maybe Alan Silva, are in the Duncan save. Sure. From from that. Okay. Um. So, do you want my top, my personal five, or the five you think I'm gonna go that I think are gonna go through? Uh, the five that you think are gonna go through. Okay, I would then go Roberta, Malik. Brandon Leak, Ooh, that, that rhymes. Uh, <laughs> Spyros Bros, and Archie. And Archie, okay. My personal five that I think are the best five is Spyros Bros, Roberta Malik, Brandon Leak, and Broken Roots. Okay. Well, I, I personally hope you're, you're uh, right about Broken Roots. I like them. They they I do. really I like them. Yes. I was I was like I like them their their audition but I was like eh, I mean it's it's good but I think there's better the song choice I thought for this last for their semi their quarterfinal was perfect and it was it, it was really good. They complement each other well. They really are Montgomery Gentry. They really are. Um and uh I really enjoyed it. Uh, it, you know, it, I hope they stick with the kind of 80s rock songs. Uh, the countrify mm -hmm. the 80s rock songs. They, they need to stick with that. Sure. Okay. So who are the acts on the next week then? So then that would be Danelia, Waffle Crew, Christina Ray, Kennedy Dodds, Selena, uh, Brett Loudermilk, Jonathan Goodwin, Bad Salsa, Bellow Sisters, Voices of Service, and Max Major, which is a far better semifinal, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the tough group. So yep. uh, who wants to <clears throat> give me their top five out of those those 11? I can, because I got it right in front. I got it right in front of me first. So um, Danelia, Waffle, Christina Ray, Kennedy Dodds, and then I think Brett Loudermilk will go through it. Oh. Um, I would potentially stub Bad Salsa for Kennedy Dodds. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. Bad Salsa is is on my list. I would say those are probably my top six there, and then I would probably throw Selena in in kind of that seventh spot, in my opinion. But also Voices of Our City's got good voting power as well. Mm -hmm. that's, a mm -hmm. much, that's just a much better semifinal than the other one. The, the bottom of the five worst acts on my board are all in the last or the first semifinal. So, <laughs> <laughs> so 
So yeah, I have the other one is much better, but yeah, I'm feeling bad salsa, uh, Christina, Danelia. Mm, I think Jonathan Goodwin could have something up his sleeve. Waffle crew. Yep. Uh, Cody, did you give us yours? Uh, I did not, but uh, you know, I, I I kind of agree. You know, Denalia and Bad Salsa, uh, Kennedy. Um, who else was in that? Uh, I should wrote it down. Yep. Waffle Crew, Voices of Our City Choir. Yeah, and, and Waffle Crew. Here. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, I I you know, obviously Max is going to get left out of this. Um, I mean, we're, we're not going to get into the, you know, the whole issue that went on there. I know we, we all know kind of how you feel about it. Uh, AGT commenter, we're not going to really get into that this evening, but, um, I, you know, Max Major's not going to make it through. He's not going to get the votes. Um, yeah, I think people are kind of mad at him. Yeah, I think they are too. But is like, I think the people who are in the know, are disappointed but like sure right. most of america saw a really great production of a magic trick sure yeah I, th I still think he has a chance just based off of that there's still people who are none the wiser about it but i also just don't think his tricks are good enough either you know what i mean yeah like it would be one thing if he was really really good and pulled the wool over our eyes but it was more he just the only reason it was good is because he pulled the wool over eyes, and I think he, that could potentially run out for him. But we'll yep. See. yep. All right. Yeah. So that's uh, that's good stuff. All right. What else? Uh, what else we got? So um, l let me ask you this: uh, as you take commenter, so you you talk about uh, Danelia a lot, and you say you really really like. W what is it about her that puts her at the top of your board? Well. So I think first it's just her voice and her tone, which is probably the thing that's most impressive is the tone because there's certainly times throughout her performance where you kind of struggle to understand what she's saying in certain parts. Cause she's got a her second language and she's got a pretty good, you know, Kazakhstan and accent or whatever the, however that is said. Um, but you never if if you're listening it sh you, you don't really get bothered by it because it just is the tone is is flawless um and then the thing that i think i don't know if you guys are familiar with the song she sang in the quarterfinals have you ever heard the original uh by harry styles sign of the times no i'm i harry styles is not up my uh not at my alley <laughs> I have heard it. Okay. Harry Styles is right up my alley. Yeah. You know, which to me shows somebody that's got creative ability that can f just take words and then f just mold it to her style, her voice. And it's something that really nobody else besides, you know, Kennedy Dodds, who's actually writing her own songs. The rest of the, you know, just cover karaoke style singers none of them are really doing it like she does it and then she's just she's just better <laughs> she's just a better singer she's she's more professional she's more comfortable up there than anybody else i see she's been on the rounds whether you like it or not that she's been on other shows i get people are like well she's she's probably handpicked that's a whole different story but ultimately that stage you can tell she has the utmost confidence in her abilities up there as she should and there's just there's a there's this weird i don't know it's just this thing about her that you look and go that's going to be a recording artist just star and i hope she thanks the show when giving her first uh, grammy speech is kind of the feeling you get and you know these talent shows we've had you have kelly clarkson you have Carrie Underwood, Jennifer Hudson, Jordan Sparks, Harry Styles, some of these acts who have made it beyond the shows that they were on and became, you know, global stars. To me, she's, she has that, that ability to, to do that. Wow. There's, there's some it factor there that you, you're seeing. Yes. Yeah. And, 
the thing that I think separates her from some of the other young singers, this was, to me, she's what we all wanted Grace Vanderwall to become when she finished, sort of this superstar, big name that, that makes it and is, you know, winning the, all the awards and stuff. That was kind of everybody's hope after she won for the show. It was like, it wouldn't be cool if she got the record deal and all that. The thing that she, that Danelia has, that Grace and some of these other kid singers never had, is it's pretty obvious she really, really, really wants to be a famous superstar singer. It's all she talks about when in her pieces, right? She talks about how she wants to be like Beyonce, as she said, um, <laughs> Ariana Grande. She's talked about Billie Eilish, Shawn Mendes. <laughs> like she, she clearly has the desire to want to do this, not to mention how many shows she's been on. And I think that's a major part of actually making it in the music industry when you're a talented young artist on a show like this is actually wanting to be famous and being sort of the a star. So you're, I mean, you're, you're basically you're saying that she's kind of made the rounds. She's been on all, all of the smaller competitions and now she's, she's kind of come to the, to the show. She's now in the big yeah. league and she wants to win that too. Yeah. Well, I mean, so she took, I believe she took second on world's best last year is what, okay. from my understanding, um, which is pretty good because I think that's kind of a variety competition as well. The thing, so the thing about her that I, so I know more about her because she's been on our shows and she's got a bigger YouTube presence than any of the other karaoke singer styles, cover singers this season. And so I know that, that she has songs that she hasn't sung yet that she hasn't even, I don't think, gone to her kind of her go-to songs that have been really, really good ones for her and that sort of suit her. I felt like the first two songs she picked were okay song choices. It's just she's – her ability to to work with the song, the way she runs with notes is really advanced. And it's just – she she has a, like you said, kind of that it factor. But I think she still has – I don't think we've seen her best in terms of song choice and just performance in general. Wow. That's a, that's a pretty strong argument there. What do you think, Jay? <laughs> um, yeah, I have not, you know, looked at YouTube presence. I haven't looked at, you know, a lot of what is out there for these people beyond what the show gives us, uh, which right. I think is what most, you know, viewers are going to have sure. is, is what the show gives you. Um, but you know, it, it is interesting knowing that she has, uh, a much deeper catalog than what we've, uh, what we've been shown. Well, yeah. And that, and not only a deeper catalog, but a deeper catalog of, of talent show music, like stuff she's actually sung on a stage in a talent show, TV talent show, I think is important. And then the one other thing she, she passes the social media test. So if you go on Instagram, you go on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, kind of the four spots, and you look at the comments of, when her, of her performance posted by AGT, and you can run this with all the acts, she passes that test on all four of those platforms, which is pretty rare. Grace Vanderwall is an example of a young singer that did really well on the show. She, she, uh, Facebook was not the, the, the greatest, the biggest fan of Grace Vanderwall during her time on the show. She had a lot of Twitter and Instagram love and YouTube love, but Facebook was not a big fan. You go read the comments. The only real gripe that people have with her is her accent. And they can't understand the words sometimes when she's singing. But other than that, it's it's flying colors. But she's not the only one. Roberta sort of passes that test as well. But I think that's an important piece of it too. Now you're you're saying Grace Vanderwall didn't go on to be that big music star that everyone. Now she was Star Girl. Come on, mm -hmm. literally. <laughs> yeah, star she, girl. she she did, she was li she li starred, Star Girl. <laughs> Yeah. She starred in a Disney plus movie and I'm, I'm not knocking, like I like, I still like her music that she's putting out now. I think it's really, it's way different than I think maybe a lot of us thought it was going to be, but it's, there was, I mean, Howie, although he was way overdoing it, but they were talking Taylor Swift, which no one should ever have said, and it wasn't accurate, but she <laughs> that's just a really high bar. <laughs> she, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it was unfair to her. They never should have said that, but, um, I mean, how he literally said, I think you're going to be bigger than Taylor Swift, which was just, I mean, it was just so out of line to say that, but she just, she sort of never really, I don't think ever wanted to be 
kind of the mainstream artist that that tours and does all that kind of stuff i think she kind of wanted to try and be more of a normal teenager than she did one of maybe once she's kind of done with being a teenager and, and school and stuff maybe it'll be a little bit different but yeah are there any other acts that you uh are well let's let's say this what acts are not in the finals that you're disappointed are not going to be there Sheldon Riley is the number one disappointment for me because I thought he was the best male singer this season. Um, and then Resound was another one that I was really disappointed didn't go through. I know, Jay, you like them a lot. Yeah, yeah, they were real high on my draft board. Absolutely. Yeah. And then so, so let me, after let me, that... Let me, let, me, let me kind of pause there for a moment. So on Sheldon Riley, what is it that you think that didn't allow him to get voted through like what do you think america didn't like that yeah. they didn't vote him through or, or wh why do you think that happened so i think it was kind of i don't know how many levels to it but one was he wasn't on the actual stage okay which i think just kind of hurts i think that hurt a lot of people um but but his obviously he's he's out there with his with his outfits and, and kind of his style and stuff. So um, there's always a concern of somebody who's way out there and, and kind of way outside of the mold of things that can maybe be off putting or whatever to people. Um, but I think probably the biggest thing was his performances were not ones that were meant to entertain you to the fullest. They were meant to impress you with his vocals, which are nearly flawless vocals but it's not one that's making you sort of really excited to listen to. And there is a part of that to this show that's important. Um, I've always said it like this, this show is like the, is like a slam dunk contest, not an 82 game NBA season. You need, it doesn't matter how good you are. If it's not entertaining and it's not your just best kind of home run hit belting all that kind of stuff then it's just probably not going to end up working out for you yeah i like that analogy good job yeah 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 and, and I've, yeah. I've got and jane i think we we've talked about this a couple of times that that's that's how i look at acts is how well did it entertain me um you know sure. i look at the quality of the act but i also look at okay if i was they they talk about vegas and if i was going to go see this in vegas would i want to go see this in vegas sure I, I can yeah. get that. Okay, so I'm sorry. Who else was on your list there? Of um, just resound. After that, okay, yeah. I really didn't have a ton of gripes. Like if you actually look at my top twenty-two, including people who were, uh, including everybody who's been eliminated, it's sixteen of them made it through. So, uh, um, really, no major gripes. Um, divas and drummers I like them but that one was one of the higher ones that on my list that didn't go through but after that I I tend to do okay guessing how America is going to vote based off of and kind of going along with what works I guess so um, I don't have a ton of gripes it was basically those two and I was like oh if we could just get them as the wild cards perfect then I'm then, uh, then I'll be okay yeah, Jay, there was a, I think what Fang E was kind of on your list of one that you thought they would they would bring back. Yeah. Uh yeah, Fang E I think is is one that I would like to have seen. Uh he's got uh something unique about his uh his performance. So, um uh, I I get why he didn't capture America, why he didn't go through, but um you know that that's I think one that could have been on the wild card uh, in a wild card spot anyhow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's see what else we got here, uh, Jay. Um, yeah, I don't know. We talked about sort of the the acts that we were sorry we didn't see or didn't get to go through. We uh, have acts that uh, we think will be our final ten. Um, uh, yeah, I I don't really have anything else that I'm I'm pressing to talk about tonight. Um, you know, I'm I'm giving you every opportunity to to win this 
to win the draft. So uh, if you if you do win the draft, it'll be through my own kindness, not your your drafting ability. I think, right? Well, well <laughs> I, I think part of it. I will take you know. I think give a little bit credit to my drafting ability, but I did have a little help from uh, from uh, you know from our buddy here, AC AGT commentary <clears> that. Uh, you know, I took a took some of his favorites and put them on my board. So um, I went with a strategy of what I thought America would do rather than what I liked. Because if I went with what I liked, I would not I would not be doing so well here. Um, so I, I'm trying to trying a new strategy here with what I think America would like. Hey, uh, AC, can I talk about the cheerleaders a little bit? What did you What did you think of them this uh, in the quarterfinals? So I was. I tweeted that night that I felt like it was a little sloppy and that they had just, there was some stuff that wasn't super crisp. And I got some responses from people who know much more about the craft than me and said they were doing some maneuvers and some tricks and stuff that were like, higher level than what they usually do and compete at so that's probably why some of the stuff was a little bit sloppier and and stuff like that and so i think i think honestly they probably would have been better off just sticking to what was a little bit more comfortable to them but it's still they're still impressive but i just it didn't i thought it was less impressive as the first time what, what 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 did you think of Howie's comments comparing them to V Unbeatable? Well, so the I compared V Unbeatable to cheerleading squads last year in terms of the you know the acrobatic and the vaulting part of it. There and V Unbeatable does a little bit. It's much more like a street version of it. Um, so I actually think the comparison is accurate. It's just there's cheer the cheerleading side is is kind of locked in a little bit more of a creative box because they're they're so stuck on the technicalities of it and and getting a you know making sure everything is kind of tricks that that can be scored and everything and like a competition whereas with the unbeatable they can just kind of just throw each other around and do whatever they want they don't really there's no holes bar so um the the comparison i don't think is wrong it's just it's too di- it's like the same thing but just different versions it's like it's like going to uh, like a nice Mexican restaurant and getting tacos and then going to like a food, a food truck and getting tacos. They're both good, but they're just very different, but in the same genre. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Um, I, I was trying to put words to it. I was trying to put my thumb on like, what is it that I I don't love the comparison, you know, like a, they're doing a lot of the same things, but they are so different from each other. And I think, yeah, the, the street tacos are <laughs> is different than what you're going to get at, at Chili's. It's yeah, exactly. Not the same. Yeah. So I'll, my dark horse is Brandon Leak. Um, his, his performance was really incredible. And it was incredible whether or not the, whatever, whatever the content of what he was saying was the way he delivers and just his ability to remember everything that he, because it's it's different from singing a song because one, there's repetition and a chorus to a song and things like that. And two, there's music to help you move along and remember what's supposed to happen. And the notes are played for you to help you stay on key with spoken word and poetry like this, it is, you have to remember it word for word and you can't be covered up by a note and and anything like that. And the way he delivers it was incredible. I, I really think that there's a a chance that he can make a a run at this thing. I thought, I thought he made one of the bigger jumps from the first time we saw him to the second time we saw him. Hmm. Uh, I, I gave most improved act to Voices of Our City Choir at this hmm. point. Yeah, I, I may be kind of the one that's uh, maybe a little down on Brandon Leak. I recognize the talent. I appreciate the talent. I mentioned on uh, this po- the podcast this week that 
Uh, I, I've listened to a lot of storytellers and spoken word people. I know several people that do, do that do this. Um, it, it, it is impressive. But as far as America's Got Talent, I'm not sure it's something I personally want to see. I think I just mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, it does entertain me. Well, yeah, spoken word, storytelling, I do get some enjoyment out of it. Sure. But is it an act I want to see in Vegas? Um, and, and that's the only reason I wouldn't vote is that I want to put an act through that I think is going to do well in Vegas. Sure. Um, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure that his act is, is um, an, an act. I don't, I'm not saying it's not a good act. I'm just saying it's not right. an act I would want to see in Vegas. Sure. Yeah. I said the other night when someone was commenting to me on Twitter about, well, it's Vegas or Vegas this or Vegas that. And I was basically like, this show hasn't been about Vegas since like, <laughs> since very early on at this it basically turned into who you like the best, what story do you like best and who is, has the most yeah. talent regardless. Like it, the, the, I, I get that. And, and there's still, I think should be part of it that should play into as Vegas. But in terms of how people vote, I don't really think that they've thought that way in a while. No, no, you're right. It's just that I, I you know, when you look at a Mark, a Vegas marquee, are you going to put him up there with a Matt Franco sure. and a, and a, and a, and a piff the magic dragon terry and, fader uh, shin Lim, terry fader yep. are you gonna put are you gonna put him on the same marquee as these guys sure um and and i don't know it's yeah, yeah. yeah uh, i don't know i i think it's like moving the goalposts you know and, and it's something we've talked about before with the judges is you know like uh, what well, uh, you know uh, i i have to put the one through that i think is the is the one that just makes me smile the most and so it's going to be you or yeah. uh I, I have to do the one that i think is going to be the vegas act so it's going to be you or i have to do the one that that uh i think america loves the most so it's going to be you. like right uh, you, you, the, they are constantly changing their justification and absolutely it's, um, you know, if there was ever a year that Brandon Leak is going to be the the guy, it's 2020. Sure, you know, it feels like uh, the the confluence of of uh, all the unrest and the pandemic and you know, his ability to uh, draw you in and you know maybe give you a sense of hope, uh, it's there. Yeah. But you know, like, it's not necessarily warm fuzzies that you're going to get from Brandon Leak, right? right? You. Um, and and people don't go to Vegas to to have their sto- toes stomped on, you know, yeah. like to to have a, a an emotional you know roller coaster and and sure. to feel like <laughs> you know oh man like uh, it's it's not a therapy session, right. you know. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like, is it a Vegas act? No, I don't think it is, but it might be what America needs right now. Oh no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, he's definitely kind of putting out there, you know, what America needs to hear at this point. Uh, would I be upset if he wins? I don't think so. I mean, but uh, there's there's still would, a lot of I other. Would. You would okay. Well, okay. because I, I think mean, there's I would... because I think there's somebody else who's so much better than everybody else. But if if <laughs> if she were to get eliminated in the semifinals, then yeah, I would have no problem with him winning. But as long as she's not eliminated, nobody else should win, and I don't think it's even a close competition. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're standing your ground on that. Yeah, that's, and uh, that's I think good. there's. I think there's been enough Twitter polls by you at this point for you guys to realize how good she is. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm asking for in the semifinal is a poll that isn't just her versus other singers. Put her up against. Put like four or five four acts in there that are for the best acts regardless of the talent and see what happens that would interest me okay i'll I'll see what i can come up with i've trying i've kind of been trying to keep the the acts similar you yeah. know the, the kids together and the the, the women together right. and the guys together but uh i'll see what i can come up with you know yep. i wish twitter i wish yeah. twitter would allow you to do more than just four options uh do you know, 22 I, put, options. I would put I would put the entire night on there. I would put all 11 acts on there right. and let's see what people say. Yeah. Um, and let, you know, then let AGT kind of look at that as well and say, okay, here's how people right. are voting. Um, but uh, fortunately it only allows you to do the four. So I'll, I'll see what I can come up with, but uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the polls. I'm glad maybe like fun with that. Her... <laughs> yeah. Maybe like her waffle. Brandon Leak and 
uh, Christina Ray or something like that and put those four okay. and just see, just see by how much she wins that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if if she gets a re, if we get a retweet from her on that, then uh, I, I'm, I may concede. Uh, <laughs> uh, her fan club Twitter page, her her fan club Twitter page, yeah, they they comment on every single one of the ones where I'll put her like first, and like we totally agree. I'm like, well, yeah, no duh, you're her fan club yeah, yeah. Twitter account, yeah. Now is that is that the official fan club or is that just it's, a fan fan I don't club? Know, just Danelia Tula show of a fan club. I'm sure there's multiple of okay. them. There's probably like a hundred. Okay. she's that good. Oh, she is that okay. <laughs> so she's she she's well known. Yeah, she's well known. She's not this nobody that's no, come up, huh? No. Okay. Well, we we didn't uh, have this at the top of the episode, but if you're still listening, uh, go to twitter follow us it's at agt time and that's where you're going to see these polls uh and and you know give us your thoughts tell us uh tell us what you think if you need more characters to communicate with us uh you can email it's agtcast at gmail.com facebook is agtcast uh but twitter is agt time so um you know we we do want to to hear more from you guys and and uh we're getting down to the nitty-gritty this is kind of fun to um you know watch this all play out now uh and and we're curious where you're all at what all you have to say um about the the upcoming episodes yeah we only have three weeks left two semifinals and then the finals and we're done with season 15 yeah it's happening yeah, it's, it seems like at the beginning of the season when we're in auditions, it just seems like it takes forever. But then we get into the live shows, and uh, just it just flies right along. And um, I can't I can't believe we're almost there. I hope we still have uh, AGT commenter. I know I'm still here. Some. I'm still with you. There he is. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was letting you guys do okay. your plug. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, hey, you know, if you if you want to follow, uh, if you want get if you want some good laughs or some uh, Danilia's Danilia uh you know some 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 advice on Danelia. follow agt commenter yes on twitter uh he's he's very 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 good um he's also got some cheerleader knowledge uh so uh, next time we have cheerleaders on agt he's your go-to guy for that what you won't find on my twitter account is max major retweets because he blocked me oh yes yes <laughs> so uh, that's if you're looking, breaking news right there <laughs> so if you're looking for max major retweets go somewhere else because i can't I fiz- i'm literally i am unable to to retweet him because that was blocked and then i asked him about it on his youtube live stream and that was really awkward <laughs> <laughs> so okay yeah okay. yeah <laughs> so um so so yeah um yeah so if you're if you're uh, next time we get some uh, cheerleaders on there um any other uh twitter followers that you get i mean anything else that you've uh been uh, attached to besides the cheerleaders uh no i know you had a run-in with with uh was it b bts is that what it is yes so well on my on my personal twitter uh i got I got, uh, you know, I, I had the BTS Twitter come after me on my own personal Twitter. Um, that's kind of died off, um, but you never know. I think they're going to be on this week. I think they're performing on AGT this week. On um, Wednesday night, the results on, show. On the results yep. show, yes. So they're not perform- yep. They're not. They're not auditioning. They're not going to be in the performances. <laughs> no, I think, no. I think. I think they would get voted through if they were in the semifinals. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think they would have no problem. <laughs> Uh, K-pop Twitter is very rabid. Uh, it's <laughs> yep. ridiculous. Yep. Uh, I, I, I can only imagine having fans as devoted as, uh, as, as the K-pop Twitter crowd. Yes. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of advice. Don't say that you're not excited to hear <laughs> BTS on AGT. Uh, they will come after you just, for that. Just keep so. it to yourself. Yes, and, and unless you enjoy a little bit of entertainment, then uh, then, then go ahead. Uh, all publicity is good publicity, right? We could uh... sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, super. All right. Well, guys, I, uh, I've, I've got family to get back to here. Yes. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really excited for the end of the season. Um, you know, uh, like we said, if you guys are, are still listening now, uh, at AGT time is the place to get a hold of, of us. Uh, Cody's doing some live tweeting from the AGT time account, uh, during the episode. So, you know, hop on, follow along, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the ride with us. And, uh, I, I think we'll look forward to the end of the season here. Yeah. Jay and I will be back Thursday night, uh, after semifinals one to recap semifinals one. Um, and then we'll do semifinals two the following week and then uh, the finals finals the week after that. So, um, yeah, subscribe, rate, review. We'd love to hear from you all. Um, follow AGT Commenter. Follow, um, yes. you know, get some good entertainment. He's He's got great analysis of the acts. Uh, put some ranks out there, rankings out there of the acts. Um, it's a good, good follow. We, we really, we highly recommend it. So, um, if you have, do you have anything, do you have anything else uh, you want to talk about before we sign off? Uh, no, just vote for Danelia. Vote for Danelia. <laughs> vote, I vote, get some vote shirts. is how you would say. I, yeah, I think I gotta get some shirts made up. Yes. Sell them, uh, sell and them on FYI, my page. And FYI, he is. It is not Nick Cannon. So no, his, not well. My twi- my bio now says that I am not, but I've confused people. <laughs> Good. Um, not Nick yep, Cannon. Not, yes. not, not the not fake Nick Cannon, which <laughs> when you dissect it out, it, it does say that it means that I'm not Nick Cannon. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, that's all we have for tonight. Um, you know, subscribe to us. We'll have a new podcast out reviewing uh, semifinals one coming up uh, next week. Everyone have a stay safe and have a great night. Thank you for joining us, AGT Commenter. My pleasure. Bye.